Islam does not differentiate between different races or colors, but unfortunately, there are communities that do. Cultural as well as racial problems are very much apparent in our communities today. For many, the very idea that their son or daughter should marry outside their race or nationality or even region or class is almost unthinkable. This is, of course, very frustrating, particularly for young people who are committed to their faith and sincere in their search for a suitable marriage partner. Second and third generation Muslims born and raised in the West face a unique dilemma. They must harmonize between finding someone who's suitable religiously and culturally. Even those who marry within their race will often face problems in marrying outside their tribe or people from specific part of the same country. So much so that some people even consider these marriages to be against the norm. But what does Islam say about all this? The Prophet Sallallahu said, when someone with whose religion and character you are satisfied with asks your daughter in marriage, accede to his request. If you do not do so, there will be temptation on earth and extensive corruption. It is difficult if one's effort to marry someone who is religious and of good character are frustrated by parents, who have their rights over us and to whom we must show our love and respect. How do we balance these sometimes conflicting interests? Sisters, I'm going to go straight to the point. What are your thoughts on mixed race marriages? Well, for me, mashallah, I think mixed race marriages are cool. You know, I'm in a mixed race marriage myself. And um, it gives me an excuse to find out more about his culture and, you know, what different foods he likes and, you know, stuff like that. Also, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, him. A man marries a woman for four reasons. For her property, for her rank, and for her beauty, and for her religion. So marry the one who is best in the religion and character, mashallah. mashallah. Okay, so we need to think about this. Yeah. Um, Liz, what does Islam say about interracial marriage? Um, well, Islam actually very much supports the idea of interracial marriages. Um, if we look at the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he married people from, you know, all different kinds of society. Um, and it was, you know, almost seen as a bit of an exercise in networking, you know, because he, he would marry, you know, all different kinds of people, um, almost to sort of build bridges or after mm -hmm. wars or something like that, mashallah. Mm -hmm. um, and as Muslims, we, we shouldn't allow ourselves to be defined by our race or by our tribe. In the Quran, Allah says, um, O men, we created you, male and female, and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another, mashallah. So, not to discriminate, inshallah. It's quite interesting you say that, I and mean, you know, this is totally against Islam as well, but a lot of it's very, quite apparent, sadly. I mean, um, have you had any experiences, Anissa, or do you know of anyone who um, is going through this? Um, well, unfortunately, I think it is quite widespread today that there are people that want to go into a mixed race marriage, but then un unfortunately, because of the parents um, and the extended families, they're not able to. And I think it's quite sad because, you know, even like myself, um, I've got beautiful children, uh, mashallah, who are very mixed race. In fact, when people ask me where do they come from, I say they come from the world. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's quite encouraged because then you're creating these little, you know, gems, mashallah. So. But that leads me to my next question. Why is the idea of marrying outside nationality, region, tribe, why is it so unthinkable to some families? I actually don't know this. Um, uh, I actually don't know why they're doing this. Um, you know, we only have to look in the Quran, verse 1 um, of Surah Al Nisa, where it just says that, you know, Allah made us from one man, that's Adam, alayhi salam, and from him then he created, you know, Hawa, you know, Eve, and then from them they, he made many other men and women. So we all come from the same one body. So, you know, I, I, it, to me, it doesn't make sense. It's so sad, really, because it, it's funny that you mentioned the Ummah, because I can remember when I was um, in the process of sort of looking into Islam, that's one of the things that I found so beautiful about it, the yes. fact that yes. there is no, yeah. you know, yeah. distinction. Yes. You know, we are one Ummah, and it's not, you know, lots of different sects or tribes yes. or, or races. So, you know, mashallah, it's really sad to hear this. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad because that's what's in the scripture, and people, yes. on the surface, it's beautiful. It's yes. only when people come into the deen yes. and they see families that they see, Subhanallah, it's, people are actually not practicing. It's, you know, not, what's from, it? it's, it's not it's a not trait from Islam. from Islam, no. But then the Prophet, peace be upon him, so said, He who calls for nationalism is like biting his father's genitals. Subhanallah. Oh. So it's a very serious yeah. topic, you know. We need to ponder on these things and really, you know, analyze where we stand with this. Definitely. Because we'll be accountable. To of course, of yeah. course. Um, so do you find that, you know, culture is more important to um, the elders than um, good character and piety? Um, Liz? 
Well, obviously, um, I'm a revert, so I don't actually have any elders to deal with, you know. <laughs> but um, I, I'm really sorry to hear that, that I do hear friends saying that sometimes this can be an issue. You know, sometimes there can be kind of family members or, or sort of parents or something like that that are standing in the way of, you know, a pious marriage taking place because of this issue of, you know, nationality or race or something like that. You know, and as we've sort of just touched on earlier, I think it's really, really sad that it is something that's so important to us. Marriage is half our day, mashallah. Mm. So, you know, I think it's down to us to kind of educate our parents, but by the time being respectful and obviously understanding, as you said, they yes. have rights over us yes. and, you know, yes. they, they have to um, accept the marriage and they have to be accepting of it and of, of our partner. But you like know, you said, it, I think it's to do with education, isn't it? Mm, yeah. You know, because if you educate yourself and you go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, then you'll necessarily see that your opinions are wrong and therefore you have to change yourself. Like you said, you'll be accountable. Um, I think that's very important. And, and also you have to kind of be careful. I remember once um, uh, when I was looking to get married, um, and I was doing a lot of work for an Asian community. Mm. And the sister said, oh, Anissa, you know, mashallah, you're such a lovely sister. We'd love to have you, to, you know, um, as a wife for our son, but you're not one of us. And for me, as a revert, my heart broke mm. because I just thought, well, I didn't want to marry her son anyway. But, yeah, but that's not, <laughs> but, the, it's not you know, the principle, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. We're supposed to be Muslim first. Mm. Exactly, and I think it's really funny when you said as a revert because you know I know Halima and I often talk about this. We think, yeah. wow, as reverts, if we're not allowed to marry outside of our tribes, you know, <laughs> then we, we'd be old maids. I do <laughs> on the shelf. <laughs> what, what I find in in my community particularly is it's always about what what other, what other people think, mm, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah, like yeah. You're, you're like, oh, I worry about what this person is going to say, what that person is going to say, mm. and what about what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala exactly. says? Exactly, and what about the actual person that's going to be in the marriage? Not mm -hmm. like, not part time, but actually, you know, it's you and your husband. So therefore, you have to be happy. Well, you know, this is quite an emotional topic for me. You know, because as growing up, my grandmother on my dad's side, you know, she um, was anti dark people, and um, you know, she really forced my father not to have any more communication with my mum. So leaving my mum, bringing me up on my own. So for the first three years of my life. I never actually had my father in my oh. life because, you know, he was so weak and he wasn't strong enough to stand up to his mum. But, alhamdulillah, three years on, you know, he gained the strength and he came back and um, we kind of tried to change things around. But my point is that it, is, it does actually affect the children, you know, yeah. and, That's you know, it. I was left without a father for three years. Yeah, you know, how, you know, Because of a race issue. Of course. I was That's a bit bitter crazy. towards her. Yeah, and then exactly. after I found Islam, I realised, you know, the importance of forgiving and etc. you know, so, alhamdulillah, it's been quite emotional. Oh. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah.